Hi, here's another example on vectors which I would encourage you to have a go at purely because at the end it's got an interesting point. Although this diagram is not drawn accurately, you've got to show that the points R, Q and P lie in a straight line. Some people call that collinear. And it's a very common type of question, so definitely have a go at this. What we've got though is we're told that O to A is the vector A, O to B is the vector B, and AQ is a half A, B to R is also the vector B, and A to P is twice B to A. So, first of all, we've got to express B to A and B to P in terms of A and B. So, let's start then with part A. B to A. This is nice and easy. B to A is going to be the same as going from B to O followed by O to A. So, that's minus B plus A. But you might prefer to write it the other way around as A minus B. Now next up we've got B to P. So how are we going to get from B to P? Well, B to P is going to be B to A followed by A to P. So we'll just write that in as B to A followed by A to P. We know what B to A is, we've just worked it out as being A minus B. But what about A to P? Well, we're told that A to P is twice B to A. B to A, so A to P is twice it. So we've got twice B to A. We can just double this, so we can say 2A minus 2B. All right? So just need to group these together. So we've got A plus 2A, which is 3A, and minus B minus another 2B, is minus 3b. Okay, so we move on now to part b. Part b simply express r to q in terms of a's and b's. So what is r to q? Well r to q can be thought of as going from say r to o followed by o to q. This is nice and easy because we know that B to R, we're told, is B. So going from R to O is going to be minus 2B. And then to go from O to Q is going to be the A plus A to Q, which is a half A. So going from O to Q must be one and a half A. So just going to write this then as minus 2B going down here, followed by plus one and a half A, or keep it top heavy like this, three over two A. You could, if you want, turn this round. We could write this as three over two A minus the two B. It's up to you. Next up, we've got part C. We've got to express Q to P now in terms of A's and B's. So, what's Q to P going to be? Q to P. How can we get from Q to P? Well, we can start from Q, and we could go from Q to A. Let's just write that in. Followed by going from A to P. This is a good route because we've got these results from earlier. Q to A, we know, must be the opposite of A to Q, so it must be minus a half A. And what about A to P? Well A to P is twice B to A. We've got B to A up here, so if I do twice it, double it, I've got plus 2A minus 2B. So we can simplify this because 2A minus a half A is going to be one and a half A or 3 over 2A and then we've got the minus 2b. There you go. 
Now we get to this interesting part, D. Show that R, Q and P lie in a straight line, or as some people say, that they're collinear. Now, we already know what R to Q is. We can see that it is 3 over 2A minus 2B. And we know that Q to P, we've just found it, is also 3 over 2A minus 2B. So both these vectors are exactly the same. R to Q is exactly the same as Q to P. So we know that these vectors are going in the same direction. They're also the same length, but that's not really the point here. They are going in the same direction. So that means that because they contain a common point Q, then R, Q and P must be in a straight line. So let's just write that in. RQ equals QP and they contain a common point and Q is common. If they didn't contain a common point then we can't say that they're in a straight line. So and Q is common so therefore R, Q and P are in a straight line. And that just winds that up okay, by just quoting that. So it's very important then to have a common point and that these vectors are in the same ratio, signifying that they are going in the same direction. Here that ratio is just one to one. We know that RQ and QP are the same length. It's well worth noting that Q would be the midpoint of RP. Okay, well, that brings us now to the end of this example.